it wasn't happening. And I, I've even in agencies I've worked with more recently, you see where all these requirements exist, not just at the agency level, but I mean, we're talking higher up into uh, the Office of Management Budget requirements here in the U.S. that say, you know, you got to make sure it all integrates and make sure it manages your stuff. And people just don't enforce the rules. I am joined today by Todd Chernikoff. He is a certified records manager an information governance professional, certified information professional with over 25 years of experience providing records and information management, governance services to organizations and clients. He served as ARMA International at the local, regional and international levels, including a member of the ARMA International Board of Directors. That's a real mouthful. It's so nice to connect with you again, Todd. How are you? I'm doing fine today. Thank you. So you'll know perhaps as good or better than anybody, how has the role of the records manager changed in the last, let's say, three, four, five years, and how should it change going forward? Well, I, I don't know about you know, three, four, five years, but over you know, the last several years, you know, even the last decade, you know, we're, we're moving more and more to where we're not managing physical records. You know, I, I deal rarely with physical records but more and more on the technology side, how to make sure that our systems that we use, either you know, a client or a corporation, I now work in the private sector, um, that the systems we use are compliant with the at least high level records and information management or information governance requirements that we uh, have, retaining, disposing, legal holds, things of that nature, and making sure that you know, whether it's records or information, we can really make sure we keep it for as long as we need it and get rid of it when we don't. How, how do you go about strategizing across multiple systems? How do you go about even assessing across multiple systems to be able to come up with a program that is a little bit more modern and, and uh, aligns with the fact that it's, it's not one physical copy in one physical place anymore? Well, I'll, I'll just say, you know, where, where I work, I work for a large credit union here in the U.S., and I'm not sort of speaking representing them. But my experience is that we're, we're looking at all the different systems that we encounter. You know, we don't probably touch all of them. I mean, there are, say, a thousand systems. Um, not all of them hold records, and some of them don't even hold, you know, much more than transient data. But as we encounter them, people come to us and we review things or we, we get embedded in people's project, project teams and we make sure we assess, can these systems, in fact, do what we need them to do. Can they retain the records for as long as we need them? Can we issue legal holds upon these systems release? You know, can we search? Can we get uh, metadata? Can we get um, metrics out of these systems about you know, how many records we have, how many records we dispose of on an ongoing basis? You know, some of these systems that records just roll off after their given retention period, let's say email, for example, uh, they stay for the given number of years, and it's not like we collect them every month and get rid of them. You know, you hit that X year retention period, and, and they just roll away. Um, so keeping the metrics, you know, making sure the systems are compliant with those um, major things that we need to do. And if the systems don't deal with records, what can we do to help them manage the information that they have in an appropriate manner? It's a lot of hand-holding, a lot of communication, a lot of explaining, um, a lot of interpreting what they contain and matching that to the uh, record retention schedule. How, how do you get the seat at the table as, you're, as a, you're getting into the business value of the data in that? Because records and compliance is, is traditionally a back office type of task, mm -hmm. but it seems like you have to be involved right at the start at the, at the business planning stage. Yeah. So how do, how do you get that seat at the table? Well, I, I guess we're, we're more and more getting that seat. We're part of the IT shop. So that's a good thing. We're embedded where I work in the office that deals with the larger corporate systems, but we deal with things at, at a variety of levels. Um, we, you know, we are getting our seat at the table of things like at the you know, the different review boards, you know, operational readiness review and things of that nature. But more important than that is we're getting involved in many cases, and especially with large uh, cloud systems, for example, HR, purchasing, things like that. We're getting a seat at the table. We're getting invited to the RFP and RFI level. 
So we can be there from the very, very beginning and make sure that the requirements we're talking about are raised with the uh, vendors and the candidate vendors. Has organizations like like ARMA, like AIM, uh, it, they've, they're talking about leveling up and they're doing a lot of work in collaboration to level up on that. Uh, what's been, is that more of a formal thing that's happening with respect to records management or is that something that informally the, the business is pulling in that direction? I don't know across the board, but I've had experiences over the last you know, 20, you know, 30 years, say, even before I got involved directly in records management and information governance, where, uh, for example, I used to be an urban planner in a municipality here in the Washington, D.C. area. And when we were getting a new permitting system that the people upstairs in the permits office, you know, sort of were running, we, we were asked, you know, we, we had sort of that user experience check. Um, what are your needs? Um, what type of metadata? What type of data do you need within your within the system so that you can do your job properly? You know, how how, how is it displayed? So I had those even you know before getting involved in this step, those experiences. So knowing sort of and being able to pull from those experiences and other experiences like making sure data is cleansed, um, that that that's where you really need to. Start, start, you know, start from the beginning. Or in some cases, I was also my first full-time records and information management job was as a records administrator and as an archivist. So I also got stuck in my head. You know, sometimes you need to start from the end in the beginning. You know, if, if you're getting stuck in, you need to make sure if it's going to be, if you know it's permanent retention, get that idea from the top. Um, but also, you know, move, after I moved moved on from that position, you know, I had one position where I sat with a bunch of software developers. Um, literally, I, mean, I was doing records work in the CIO's office at this particular federal agency, but I was sitting there with people who were doing in-depth data and information stuff, and actually had opportunities to sit on some of the in on these review board meetings, and it you know sparked that thing saying we really got to get in from the ground floor so that we so that and I, I noticed that even though the federal government has all these different rules uh, about you know making sure your systems you buy and procure manage your records properly it wasn't happening and i I've, even in agencies i've worked with more recently you see where all these requirements exist not just at the agency level but i mean we're talking higher up into uh the office of management budget requirements here in the u.s that say, you know, you got to make sure it all integrates and make sure it manages your stuff. And people just don't enforce the rules. And so you get these, get people who procure things, create things that don't properly manage their records and information. We've had lots of conversations lately about privacy by design and, mm -hmm. and how that has influenced things, things like the GDPR in, yeah. in Europe and other legislation. And it feels like, uh, like information governance by design should be a topic of conversation when you're talking to the developers. And, and when I look at, and I have a lot of familiarity with the technology that is out there as far as information governance goes, quite often... It is like a module that you add on top of an existing like document management system. Well, we'll give you the information governance module or the records management right. module. Mm -hmm. So which which obviously tilts its hat to the fact that it's not by design. It's not inherent in every piece of data that you're going to have mm -hmm. this level of, of understanding and this level of uh, ability to act with confidence. So so because of that, then the onus falls on you in order then to be both police and business consultant mm -hmm. and try not to be so much on the police side because nobody nobody wants to act yeah. just based upon rules. In previous experiences, sort of as a consultant in the federal government and as a person working in, um, I used to work in planning and zoning and I'd be the person who sat at the front desk reviewing plans and saying, you know, this works, this doesn't work. If you really want to do this, go down the hall to the city council and tell them they have to change the law. <laughs> about whatever it is. It's it's not within my power to even help you out with this. So I, I have the experience of, of being cop with a badge and a picket book and things like that. Um, but, you know, it's, if you need to go there, go there. If you don't need to go there, you know, hold someone's hand and bring them along so they understand 
what the rules are and how, how you might be able to enforce them. You know, you, you say, you know, plugging in the uh, records management or the information governance module, some of the stuff we deal with, not even close. It's not like we have just a system for unstructured records where we could just literally plug something like that in. We've got things that do all sorts of sorts of stuff. You know, we're a financial institution. We've got everything from you know, audit stuff to just the, your, your regular transactions and HR and all those different things. Some of them do have native capabilities and we're happy um, to you know, help people figure out what to configure into them to help do that. You know, if you can't, if you don't, if you don't have to hard code things in, you make it configurable, let's say your retention requirements change. You just want to be able to tweak, you know, sent seven to six years or whatever, and not have to dive deep in code and do something. So if you can hold people's hand and explain it from the very beginning, your odds of success are pretty good. And, and we're having more and more people who approach us you know, at, not necessarily out of the blue, but, you know, there's so many different projects, so many different things happening across the organization. Um, we deal with, you know, the people in IT who help the businesses, but sometimes you have to, the businesses have, you know, deep, deep knowledge of, of systems. So you work with them as well and everyone comes to the table together. So yeah, that, the opportunity to get people in, I always say, and I've, I've done, you know, presentations at various uh, ARMA, AIM, and other organizations talking about communications and especially communications between you know, your records and information governance and the systems development and implementation. And the sooner you get the RIM people involved, the better off you are because if you've gone halfway through your development and then you realize, oh, hey, I got to figure out how we retain and dispose of information and records you're going to have to spend time and money to uh, backtrack and fix that. So ground floor, the sooner the better, um, you know, so that you know where things are going, the rim people know where things are going and everyone can work together to you know, walk that path to make, make whatever you're deploying work properly. The records managers, the data stewards, they know intuitively that, that uh, this is a practice that is ongoing it mm -hmm. is a forever plan, even though most data shouldn't be there forever and, mm -hmm. and, and quite frankly, should always have a disposal date, even if it is 100 years or what, whatever it, it might be. I, I feel like a lot of people outside of, of that sphere think that it's just a cleanup project or an application that you need to install. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself doing a lot of coaching on the fact that it is a program not, not with the people that I work with on a, on a you know, generally regular basis, they get the idea of the difference between a project, you know, we're creating this system and then it's going to run and a program. The, you know, we are a set rim function within your organization. But, you know, let's say the other 20 some thousand people within the organization um, may not necessarily have, have that same you know, knowledge base. And we're working on you know, rolling out more and more information and training to the people within our organization so that they do have a better idea of what we are, what we do, even if we don't have daily contact with them. Um, you know, my experience working in the federal government is that everyone, and that is everyone, contractors, employees, et cetera, get it, you know, when you join or you come on board to do a project, you're given a records management training class, probably online last year, like half hour, 40 minutes, and you do it. Um, and then every year after that, you do it again. And again, the year after that, it's the law now in the US government that you will take records management training on a regular basis. Another thing that comes to mind is that the more and more you get people to understand RIM or records management, information governance, whatever it is in your organization, um, ha has its place, has its purpose, has its rules, you need to, again, sort of dive into trying to, in some cases, break people's personal attachment to their information assets. Because if you can convince them that they don't have to make decisions about it, it's much easier to enforce the corporate rules against you know, your record retention schedule, whatever you work with. Um, I know in the federal government, I've worked in organizations where you have a lot of uh, scientific research and things of that nature. And a lot of these scientists are very attached to uh, the work they do and trying to uh, 
get them to understand it's not really yours. It belongs to Uncle Sam or whoever, um, and, and you don't get to make the rules. So it's shifting to understand that you know, these are important corporate assets or agency assets sort of helps in some cases to steer away from that attitude and to stop the hoarding and whatever else might be occurring. Well, it, can it be used as as a bit of a carrot as well uh, in that if, if somebody is really attached to their data, they love their data, they, they want it because they want the ability to recall mm-hmm. it when they need it. If you can mm-hmm. demonstrate to them, well, we can make it so you can de- recall it whenever you need it and it's legally mm-hmm. appropriate or policy right, yeah. appropriate, mm-hmm. you, you can show them that that happens, then maybe it could be a carrot for them to relinquish the, the printing it and keeping it in their desk drawer or their garage or in their attic. Right. And, and, and that's, you know, when you were about to go into that, starting at that topic, that just comes right to my top of my mind. If you can show them how proper records and information management practices benefit them in overall business operations and their personal findability, storage, things like that. Yeah, it's definitely an advantage. 